Doc, talk about an exciting job. This is no <laughs> ordinary nine to five. No. Now that we've made it 90 meters deep, how would you describe your job? Is it a bit like playing in a sand pit? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much a, a grown adult who's never outgrown her sandbox days, right? <laughs> I love playing um, in the sand. Well, what I do is called excavation. Yeah. So right now you're seeing the process of excavation. The girls are mapping, recording, photography photographing everything that we worked on yesterday before we start taking things down another level, another layer. Um, and it's a slow process um, and it's, it's exciting because you never know what might pop up. Mm -hmm. um, Sarah there has some charcoal all the way back there. We have bits of bone that starts coming up. Um, Do we know what kind of bones it is? Or? Well, they, they appear to be small mammals. That's what we can tell from, from in the field. Uh, why would you say this science is important? Well, it, it's, it's fascinating. I mean, let me start from the beginning. Um, I always wanted to be an archaeologist from the age of seven. Really? From the age of seven. And that was from watching a cartoon show with my mom, The Adventures of Tintin. <laughs> and I was just fascinated because there was this, this idea that you could tell a story about a time long gone based on artifacts. Um, and that is what archaeology and paleontology essentially is. It's looking for evidence, telling the story of ourselves um, from a different viewpoint um, and from voices that can no longer speak. I find it fascinating that there have been more people who've gone to space than have ventured into these spaces. Yeah, it, it's both fascinating and kind of scary <laughs> at the same time, right? Uh, so the Dina Lady Chamber, which is right in front of us, um, only 47 people approximately 47 people have been in that area so again there have been more people in space than in that very chamber and pretty much that's where our history lies a part of it yes yeah. uh, there are many more spaces in here that are just waiting to be revealed mm -hmm. and isn't that part of the fascination with your job that like you say you never know what you're going to find and that you don't know what else Behold these yes, caves Yes, every day is a new adventure. Every single day is a new adventure. So how did your family react when you told them that you want to be an archaeologist? Not a doctor or a lawyer or a teacher? <laughs> well, both my parents are doctors, right? So I think everyone around us was expecting that, you know, I've got two siblings, two younger brothers. Someone was expecting that one of us would become a doctor. Um, I became a PhD doctor, <laughs> so it's close. Um, but I think they, they fed my fascination and my interest in history and archaeology. How does it feel to be a part of the limited few people who have, I mean, you've mentioned that only 47 people have been mm. back there. How does it feel to be a part of that kind of history? It's, it's an incredible feeling. Um, you know, it, it makes you feel like you're part of like a sort of like exclusive club. <laughs> uh, but also you want to share that experience with as many people as possible. Um, but it's, it's incredibly exciting. Um, it's wonderful. It makes for great stories, um, great conversations. Um, and also, you know, to be a person of color in, in the field as well. So it's opening doors that most didn't feel was possible. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a good feeling. And it's great to see, you know, representation as yes, well in this yes, field. Yeah. Doc, when you're uncovering these fossils, I mean, you're not just being a scientist here. It seems that there's a lot more to your job down here. Mm. What does it all entail? There, there's a bunch of things going on here. Um, so I am primarily an archaeologist. Um, very good at digging square holes in the ground, um, looking at artifacts and um, trying to piece together what might happen. Um, so far, what are the findings telling us about the space and what it was used for? So at the moment, we've just touched the tip of the iceberg, right? Um, the last season that we were here, we found evidence of fire um, and evidence... And that's quite groundbreaking, yes, right? Yes, very much so. If you find fire in a paleo um site, that is big news, right? because either hominins are using fire or you're having different um, individuals using the space, at possibly at different times. So there's a lot that needs to happen. Uh, we need to find out the extent of the fire use here. We need to get dates sorted. Um, some of the small bones that we're finding were burnt and some were cracked open. 
And usually when that happens at an archaeological site, it's a sign of cooking. Oh. Not saying that that's possibly what happened here, but it's a possibility, right? Bones are cracked, they're burnt, so there is activity here. Yeah, there and how activity. old are these bones? We haven't dated them yet, um, but there are animal bones. Um, so again, it's, it's a long process. Um, it could take us a year to figure out what's happening. And silly question, we are sure that, you know, somebody didn't just come in here, have a, some chicken wings and <laughs> leave some bones from two <laughs> I mean, months look, ago. It's not out of the question, right? It's, it's not a silly question. It's actually a question I asked myself <laughs> last year. I'm like, hold on. It's easy for me to get in here, right? Um, but let's be fair, you wouldn't come down to this cave for funsies, right? No. Um, so the likelihood of someone just coming in here, having a picnic underground is unlikely. Um, so that's the, the one logical um, explanation for it. But we go through all the processes, um, trying to eliminate as many um, candidates as possible. Mm. Um, we only know that Homina Lady used this, this cave system. So until we find evidence of anything else, we can only say that it's possibly Homina Lady using these spaces. We've seen some pictures here and there, but if you could describe, what does Homina Lady look like? Ooh, Homo Lady is, is a mix, right? Um, they have hum modern human-like features uh, as well as ancient features as well. So they're quite small individuals, um, quite petite, with long arms, long legs, curved, long curved hands. So they were quite adapted to climbing, um, which is quite useful in a space like this. Yeah. yeah. So would they walk upright, climb trees? I believe they did from their bones. They, they walked upright to some extent. Um, again, with the long arms and curved fingers, they could climb very well as well. Going back to representation, now, to get this title right, because I'm far from the science, this doc, no, no. you are the first black South African woman to hold the title of principal investi investigator for the Gladysville Cave. Yeah. What's yeah. the Gladysville Cave? <laughs> And this sounds very, very important. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I was, I, I'm a bit of shocked at that title. Um, it's sad, really, to be the first black female in 2022 when I got um, my permit for Gladysville well Cave. Um, but hopefully there'll be many more coming after me um, that will take the lead. So principal investigator means that you're in charge of the research in a certain uh, area. So I'm in charge of research at Gladysville Cave. It's also in the cradle of humankind couple of kilometers away from here um, and it's another cave site where lots of fossils have been discovered um, this was Professor Lee Berger's first site actually when he came to South Africa and in 1992-93 uh, he discovered two hominin teeth um, and the rest of the hominin hasn't been found so for 17 years he spent his time looking for more of this hominin didn't find anything then he moved on to other things. 20 years would pass by. I would come along with my team and then we'd go back to Gladysville. We didn't find a hominin, but we did find a skull, a skull of a primate. Wow. And that's a promising start because if you find the primates, there's a potential that you might just find the hominin. Here you come along. Yeah, here I come, <laughs> 20 years old. Hello. I'm just going to find something really <laughs> vital for this investigation. Yeah. What does that feel like for you, Doc, when you make such a discovery and you unearth such things? The, the process uh, to, to getting there is quite stressful. It's a lot of stress, anxiety, because you don't want to mess up, mm. especially when you're an early career scientist. Um, you have this pressure on you to do things perfectly and correctly. So there's a lot of anxiety and stress. Um, and you sort of feel disappointed when nothing comes from it. And then something happens. And that's the most incredible feeling. It's so exciting. You could cry sometimes. <laughs> um, and we spend months out in the field. Um, so also the exhaustion does get to you. But man, when you find something, it's the best feeling ever. Do you also feel a connection with these fossils and this past life? I wouldn't say I feel a connection with the fossils in the past life. I feel a connection with the people that I work with. Um, a very supportive team, very supportive mentors who push you to your limits. Um, and if you do fall, they're there to, to catch you in a way. 
Um, and you know, it, it's that sort of dynamic that keeps you going. The past fascinates me. It, it feeds my curiosity. Um, but the most important is the people that you work with. You've clearly had a very um, fruitful career already. You were also awarded the Nat Geo Explorer in Residence. Uh, Nat Geo Emerging Explorer. Yeah. We'll get to the residence <laughs> one day. Oh, <laughs> I will get you. there. I'm, I'm putting it out there for yeah, you. <laughs> manifestation, I accept it. Let's correct it. So how, what, what is that like? Um, that was that was a shock actually. Uh, that happened in 2021, if I remember. Uh, I got a phone call. Um, actually, no, it was an email uh, from National Geographic. They're like, "Hey, we'd like to do a Zoom call with you." And I'm just like, "Okay, maybe they just want me to do like a classroom online thing, which I've done before um, when I first started here in Rising Star in 2018." And um, got onto the Zoom call and was like, hey, congratulations, you were nominated and now you have the award of Emerging Explorer. <laughs> and I was just like, how can I get what? <laughs> and like, you know, they're explaining to me what this award means, the potential for it. And I heard absolutely nothing. I was still processing the news that I've got into National Geographic. Mm -hmm. like, I got into it, man. I'm like, cool. Um, and it's, it's a huge deal because um, that means that the people that really value science and exploration are looking at you and they think that you have potential to do something great. Mm. I hear your friends call you Dr. Bones. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. Bonesy. <laughs> when did you get that nickname? I mean, it's obvious why you got it. Yeah, um, it started unofficially uh, back in 2019, I would say. Um, so, you, you know, being an archaeologist, it's not your generic career. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd have to explain to people, you know, what I do and what I want to specialize in. I want to specialize in human bones. I want to be able to read the bones and tell you all about this individual. Um, and they're like, oh, you mean like that character on TV, Bones? <laughs> and I'm like, okay. So I started using that to like sort of explain what um. I do because it was so easy. Um, and then they would explain to their friends what I do. And then it eventually became, oh, yeah, she's Bones. Bones, 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 and it's stuck. Dr. Bones. Yeah. Bones. <laughs> bones. Thank you so much. This, this was a great interview. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Why not drop us a comment below? We love reading your opinions. Remember, you can now access carte blanche stories anytime, anywhere even offline. Carte Blanche, the podcast, is now available on all major podcast platforms. So be sure to hit that follow or subscribe button and be part of our growing online family.